Our founding fathers created a new kind of nation, a nation based on the promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The founders knew that a free government had to be grounded in the consent of the governed. That's why they ensured that every member of our House of Representatives would be directly elected and regularly face the voters. The House, said John Adams, would be an exact portrait of the people. That vision is shattered today. Congress is dysfunctional, polarized, and paralyzed. Most districts are so partisanly lopsided that they're barely even contested. Nationally, in 2012, Democrats won the most votes, but Republicans won the most seats. Looking to 2014, Republicans need only 45% of the national vote to keep control of the House. These kinds of distortions break the link between voters and their government. When elections don't have consequences, where's the consent of the governed? The root cause isn't the usual suspects. It's not just campaign spending. It's not just gerrymandering. The Republican advantage is primarily due to long-standing patterns of where each party's supporters live. Today's hyperpartisan climate ensures that a district's partisan majority is far more likely to determine the outcome. Gerrymandering helped Republicans, but their national advantage wouldn't change much, even if district lines were drawn by a politically neutral saint. The root cause is our winner-take-all system. Rules that turned 51% of the votes into 100% of representation and 49% into zero. In other words, it's less redistricting than districting. Winner-take-all elections are always unfair to someone. Whole regions of the country now elect only one party. Men hold nearly five times as many seats as women. Racial minorities are underrepresented and the middle has fallen out of Congress. Historically, these bridge builders came from districts where most voters usually favor the opposite party. In 1993, there were 47 such representatives. Today, only six. That's barely 1% of the House. So, voters don't get the representation they voted for. Bridge builders can't win. Compromise goes out the window. Gridlock becomes the norm. And nothing gets done. Looks pretty bleak. But there is a solution. Hello, my name is Chris Novoselic and I'm chairman of Fairvote. You may know me from my work in music, however, I've always been interested in making our electoral process more inclusive and responsive. Fairvote has an answer, fair representation voting grounded in our traditions and values. With fair representation, with fair representation candidates compete to represent a particular district, just like now. But the districts are bigger and elect more than one person. The key is to use fair representation voting systems that ensure that winning the most votes gets you more seats, but not all seats. Instead, you will win one of three seats if one of three voters wants you to represent them. This math means fair representation of each region's left, center, and right all across America. To see how it works, here's our fair voting plan for Louisiana. Today, its six House seats are gerrymandered in a way that makes five of them safe for Republicans and one of them safe for Democrats. With fair voting, Louisiana would have two districts, three seats each. Voters would have one vote and would be allowed to rank the candidates in order to ensure the results are fair. Like-minded voters would earn a seat with more than a quarter of the total vote. They'd earn two seats if they cast more than half of the ballots. The result would be a fair reflection of Louisiana voters. The majority would get the biggest share, but almost everybody would be represented by someone they'd actually voted for. Here's our plan for Massachusetts and its nine House seats. 40% of voters are Republicans, but no Republican has won in two decades. With three districts, each with three seats, Republicans would have the votes to win a seat in each district. We'd see shared representation of both parties across the state. Nationally, winning a majority of votes would mean winning a majority of seats. But being in the minority in your region wouldn't shut you out. At the same time, we'd elect more bridge builders, innovators who now rarely win. Social conservatives who like unions, social liberals who want small government, urban Republicans, rural Democrats, and so on. 
Third parties and independents could run without being spoilers. Most fundamentally, far more voters will have representatives who actually share their views. Reform is within our grasp. Fair representation voting is fully constitutional and already used locally. We're working with congressional reformers on a bill to require each state to create independent commissions tasked with drawing House districts designed for fair voting. That would eliminate partisan bias and forever kill the gerrymander. The full spectrum of voters would earn representation. That's real democracy. Visit fairvoting.us to see our fair representation voting plans and learn more about how they would transform our elections. To be part of our growing reform coalition, sign up at fairvoteaction.org. Let's work together to uphold our founders' vision and truly make Congress the people's house.